What's going on guys? Welcome back to a No Death Run review of Pinocchio. This game is incredibly charming, incredibly interesting, incredibly fun and engaging. This, in no joke, took me by surprise. I'm going to just talk about this game and how I came about playing it. I put it on the Sega Mini a couple months back. I played it for a few minutes. I wandered around this level for a bit. I found it kind of boring and, you know, nothing that was really pulling me back. I was considered taking it off the mini to make space for a different game, so I decided to pick it up and play it. Upon playing it, I got pretty lucky. I got through the first level in a very lucky way, which allowed me to continue on in this game and discover the hidden gem that it is. Now this first level is incredibly annoying. After I beat the game, I was really taken by it because it was just a very unique game. Like I haven't played anything like it. Like, as long as I can remember, I can't think of anything I played that reminds me of this game and what this game brings to the table. Okay, so with that being said, after I beat it, I decided to pick it up and play it again because I figured I could beat it a lot quicker. And I also thought it would be a really cool no death run. I knew I wasn't gonna do it my next turn, I just wanted to play through it again. So I picked it up, I played it again, and I played this first level. And I got lost for like 10 minutes and started to get really frustrated and annoyed. And th I thought to myself, I'm like, I beat this level in like two minutes with no problems whatsoever my first time. What's the difference? Well, I got really lucky. I didn't realize I was in a pretty good labyrinth. Now I know the labyrinth and the way through it, and I'm not gonna share how you do that because I think it's a fun little experience that someone should play for themselves and discover. The first level can be an absolute bitch, but once you get through it, the rest of this game is really, really cool. Now, I don't know the story of Pinocchio too well, but I think that guy is probably no good. Okay, so the first level in the game that you can actually die, you can die in the first level, it would just take a whole lot. Because one thing you don't really die from in this game is damage. You can take a lot of it. You can eventually die from it, but Jesus, you can take way too much damage before you really die. So if you do die from that, you've done very, very poorly. You can just fall off the edge here. And it is quite easy. It can happen by mistake. One of the bugs will just knock you off, but nothing difficult. This level is just really pretty. I think it's really cool that you get to play with Jiminy Cricket. It reminded me how cool Jiminy Cricket is and just how pretty the graphics are in this game, which another thing that kind of kept me playing. Looking at the background is like a theater in which it segues after you defeat all these moths, because that's the goal of this level, just kill all the moths, defend them from this light post that Jiminy Cricket's chilling at, and after that, he'll sit down and he will watch the play that Pinocchio performs in, which you play. It's really interesting. It's really weird. Yeah, the music in this level is super catchy and super awesome. This whole game is very cryptic in the sense that nothing is explained. It just lets you figure it out all on your own and I really like that about the game because it offers many different things, many different challenges that could leave one wondering and guessing what to do. Even in this level you might start to wonder like, am I doing this right? Is this all that you're supposed to do? And then after you kill off the moss and it ends, you're like, okay, I guess that's what you had to do. It's just, it's a strange game, but it's a cool one that I recommend. I also say that if you have an interest in playing this game you should probably click away and just go play for yourself because it does provide a very unique first time playthrough that will leave you going what the fuck in a lot of different ways and a lot of different parts in this game I'm almost done. <laughs> 
So I skip the only moment in the game where it gives you any direction whatsoever. Basically a game of Simon Says, which was a lot of fun. And no joke, the first time I played it, after I passed each round, I was actually itching to play another round. And I was actually happy with how many they gave you, but I would have actually had no problem doing one or two more. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, so basically she jumps out, you follow her actions. There is several different inputs that you can use and you have to make sense of what she's doing as your motions are different than hers, though it's basically same, same. So with these girls, you see them spin. That's my version of the spin right there, Pinocchio. He just sort of spins his leg around. He doesn't spin the same way. And you have to make sense of their dance and how it translates to the moves you have to use. Now, though it's not really that hard, it is still challenging enough to get wrong on multiple occasions. And each round does obviously get progressively harder or harder to translate what you should do with the moves. And then it does mix in some moves that aren't indicated when it does show you the small tutorial. If you screw up and you mess up the sequence the crowd will boo you and throw tomatoes at you in this run here i actually kind of do it uh perfect which i was kind of shocked by because i'm not actually very good at this part because it is a bit of a mind fuck and that's another part of what made this game so charming is that this was a mind fuck to determine what that little short leg girl is doing with her moves and how i'm supposed to copy it and make sense of her moves that look different than mine it's a mind fuck Now this last part, one could argue that it does some bullshit because it does mix in moves that aren't indicated in the sequence it shows you at the beginning. Now I don't mind it because I felt it's smart that I had to observe that and figure out, okay, does that mean I can do more moves than what I was shown? And yes there is, and you need to make sense of that, which made the final part obviously harder to do and just kind of more rememberable. Okay, no question the best song in the game and I'm glad they put a good song in this part because you're probably going to wander around a lot the first time you play this level unless you watch my playthrough here and you see exactly what to do. Now you just present it with a 2D area, you're able to run right and then it stops and there's balloons that shoot into the sky. And yeah, it seems kind of weird because there's items in the sky that you think maybe you need to get. Are they important to get? But no, what's important is going across to the left and not getting hit by the kids throwing bricks at you, which they will do a lot. For me personally, this was one of the biggest mind fucks in the level because I didn't know how far and exactly where I was to go. I honestly had the intentions of going as high as possible, and then I noticed that each balloon does something different. Red ones explode almost instantly after grabbing them. Green ones will stay afloat and go the normal direction for about 5 seconds, and blue ones will actually shoot straight up into the air the longer you hold on them, which is why I released right there holding the blue balloon. Oh, you fucker.
And that's it, the level is over. You can't really die on that level, again, unless you take a ton of damage, which is extremely hard to do. But here's one of the first levels that can eat up your men really quickly. You basically need to remain ducked when in that thing the entire time then watching out for those obvious jumps. Nothing major, but you do need to hit the bells because if you don't hit the bells, the courses will be harder and you want to make it as easy as possible. So when you see a bell, you got to hit it. Again, nothing hard, especially compared to, say, the minecart spots in Donkey Kong Country or Tasmania in particular. Pretty easy stuff, but they made it hard enough that it can definitely chew up five or six men from you pretty damn quickly. So another very bizarre and cryptic spot in the game as you reach a spot that could sort of be described as a boss fight. This guy here that you were following in the last level, he was throwing things at you and now here he is shooting rockets at you. It's strange. Basically you just need to make those rockets explode and somehow stand close enough to them to make them present themselves with special items. Get enough special items and he'll just stop. It's really weird. You might just find yourself dodging the minecart as long as you can. You might find yourself attempting to make those rockets fly back at him. Nothing and none of it will work unless you get the stupid special items. And then you need to figure out how to make them spawn. And I'm still not totally sure on how you make them spawn as one appears right there. It's almost as if you need to be near the rocket or not even. I don't know. It just makes no sense. It's just really fucking strange. And it's another one of the weird, obscure things about this game that I liked. Because it wasn't hard enough to piss me off and like, you know, make me wasting a lot of time here. <laughs> but hard enough to not make me know what to do and make me kind of just raise an eyebrow and like question there's actually a great element to this part as the track shakes it almost feels like you have a rumble pack when it happens it uh it's really neat the graphics in this game are phenomenal so let's not waste any time and do the game pro magazine review graphics are unbelievable in this game five out of five the sound is unbelievable in this game. Listen to it right now as you approach one of the coolest levels I've ever seen in a game. I never knew there could be a badass level in a Pinocchio game, but you're looking at it right now and you're hearing it right now. These graphics are absolutely gorgeous. The setting of this level is absolutely badass. Those sprites right there, those creepy Sasquatches or whatever dark entity men are wicked looking and some of the coolest sprites I've ever seen. I should mention now that you do have a kick that you obtained after the... Simon Says sequence, but man, yeah, controls, 4.5 out of 5, they're very, very good, I have almost no complaints, other than Pinocchio's jump is a little lackluster, and grabbing the ledges, the hit detection of doing what I'm doing right there is a little shoddy, not enough to give it a perfect score, but definitely a 4.5 out of 5, so yeah, graphics 5, sound 5, controls 4.5 out of 5, and the fun factor was a 5 out of 5 for me. Now, I imagine if I played this game and got lost in the first level and never found the way, I probably would have hated this game and not give it the time of day that I did. So I guess if you get lucky and manage to get through the first level without much fuss, you might dig deep enough into the game to find the gem that it is. Otherwise, you might dismiss it really quickly and call it shit. But it's not. It's fucking wicked. I guess another part you could describe as a boss fight is this dude here that you need to kick off the cliff in a very specific manner that's pretty easy to perform. Now this was a very easy level and did have two spots you could actually die from pits. The next level, I don't think you can actually die. It's one of the more forgettable levels in the game. Though it looks fantastic, it plays kind of awkward and a little bit uncomfortable. I think they do that on purpose to kind of make it, you know, feel 
like kind of awkward because you're underwater. I guess you're trying to save Geppetto right now. Uh, and yeah, while you're upside down, it feels kind of strange. You collect these shells, which will invert the controls back to normal. There's just a lot of annoying pests scattered throughout the level that will knock you about. And it's kind of done with no repercussions, though. Because again, dying in this game from damage is more or less impossible. Like, you got to do really bad. Like, really extremely bad to die by damage. It's all about pit deaths in this game, or like on the roller coaster, for example. But the level looks great. It sounds great. It's cool. Bouncing in these weird clams is unique and strange. And I don't know, just kind of a throwaway level in an otherwise interesting, cool game. Oh, for Pete's sake. Okay, so there are several levels in this game where you can't actually die. Does make it kind of favorable for a no death run. I don't necessarily do them because it's hard. Some games I do to challenge myself. Other times I do it just to make it look aesthetically pleasing. But this level is a level where you can die really, really, really quickly. And it's kind of a beginner's trap. The first time you get here, you're not actually going to know what to do, nor understand the controls. And you're probably going to die within three seconds right away. After that, you'll probably only die two or three times and never ever again, as you just need to grab the fish and kind of pull yourself through the level. However, in the end, you must get captured. You just need to get far enough that it won't take a man from you. And in that case, it's about 30 seconds of progression. But if you're caught slipping in under those 30 seconds, you're going to lose men real quick. Okay, second last level of the game, one of the coolest levels in the game. Another one of those weird cryptic ones where you're like, what the fuck do I do and where the fuck do I go? You have these boxes that you can destroy. It has a symbol of a log above you and is counting them. So when I got here, I made a point of getting every single one. I think you only need 15 or maybe it's 20. I can't remember. Uh, I think I get 20 for this one just to be sure. But in the end, you do need at least 15, 20. Then it raises, well, what do you do after you get the 15 and 20? You have to find this spot where you knock over a lamp and it creates a small fire on a little bit of wood, which I guess makes it hard for the whale to breathe because you're inside the whale, which makes it really cool because you're obviously still trying to save Geppetto. Um, and the music gets very intense, overly intense for a game like Pinocchio or, Pinocchio, or so you would think, because it's like a lighthearted Disney game Though it has its dark moments in this game, and this music is very intense, and it's very wicked, and it's just kind of shocking. Like, this game really surprised me. Though it is an easy throwaway game that you, you know, might not come back to all that often, you might be shocked at how much fun you have when you first play this. I really was. Here's actually a very dangerous spot right here. Don't perform this jump properly going up, and that crab will knock you straight down in a real quick easy death.
So as you can see, I settled for 20 boxes. I just got tired of kicking them because I knew that's enough to pass the level. So I know where to go and I'm just finding that stupid lamp, which brings you to the one of the more dangerous spots. Actually, this spot in particular, climbing across these little logs down below or barrels and crates did kill two of my attempts. Now, I did get this on my fourth try because there are some very challenging spots that can kill you pretty damn easily in this game and you'll definitely see that in the last level but this part here becomes one of my small complaints and why i didn't give controls 4.5 out of 5. his jump does feel one of those jumps where when you do the same thing five times in a row you'll make the jump five times but die once and you're kind of left wondering why that's where the controls for me and the hit detection on these crates kind of come into play though well, i did execute it quite nicely there Last level hype. <coughs> so this level looks awesome. Absolutely awesome. The water looks just great. The graphics in general look fantastic. The seagulls flying around look super dope. The mountains look good. The giant whale coming up from behind looks awesome. This is a game of follow the pattern. Those ones there, you need to identify, must be jumped over. Those ones there, must be ducked under. Do it for as long as it, the level makes you, and then you get through the level, jump in the water, and then you save Geppetto, and that's the game. But this spot here, you can die really, really easily. Very, very, very easily. Two of my failed runs, because I did fail, fail four times in this game. Twice we're in the last level, twice we're in this level. As they do kind of have a fun challenge in this game it's, it's easy but it has a real quick way of taking a life from you which made me want to do the no death run because i knew they made a point to kill you so i was like well i'm gonna get through without dying because this game is cool enough to do it but anyways guys thank you for watching my no death run and review of pinocchio 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 for the sega genesis also on the super nintendo if you never played it played it i honestly find it to be a very charming cool game that I'll definitely pick up and play once every year, once every two years. It's a cool game and a very simple, fun game that will make you think and make you wonder and probably leave a good impression after you play it. Peace out. Oh, you can get sucked back into the whale if you're slacking at the back of the screen in which it'll take you to the last level that you just played inside the whale. But here, be careful. Don't push to the left. You must push to the right. Charming, fun, unique, Pinocchio for the Sega Genesis, also on the Super Nintendo. No Death Run. This is a very unique, charming, interesting game. I really enjoyed it. It was an easy No Death Run, but I really wanted to do it because it was just a very engaging game. It made you think, it made you wonder. Its graphics were beautiful. Um... Just a very interesting, interesting game. I'm going to have fun doing commentary when talking about this No Death Run because when I played this, I did. I had a blast. I thought it was just a very interesting take on a game while remaining challenging and fun. Um, easy game. Uh, easy No Death Run. But it does have a lot of ways of taking men from you. So it's not quite as easy as I made it look. Especially for a first time play. A first time play, this is a very unique experience because it's gonna make you wonder and wander around and get lost and, you know, not totally be sure of what you're doing. The game's not self explanatory, it makes you kind of explore 
um, The Unexplained. It's interesting. I don't know. I just really enjoyed this game. Thank you for watching my No Death Run of Pinocchio. Crappy ending, though. I would have liked it if it showed the characters from the game. But anyways, he's just going to clap there like a little retard, I guess.